All right, and <laughs> nice. And we can lower those hands down. And all those opposed, please raise them up now. And down, and any abstentions, raise them up. And the minutes pass. Now on to the agenda for tonight. I will entertain a motion at any time to approve the agenda. Uh, Senator Sabrenik, is that a motion? Yes, it is. All right. Do we have a second? Second by uh, VP Moreno. All those in favor, please use the hand raising feature now. All right. Awesome. And you can lower them down now. And all those opposed, please raise them up now. And down. And any abstentions, raise them up. All right. And the agenda for tonight passes. And now moving down to public comments. And we are w welcoming Dr. Daniels. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <clears throat> So this is my opportunity to say something? Yes, yes it is. Oh, okay. Well, knowing that everybody's really thinking about those midterms and thinking about what's going to transpire next term, you know, I know that my colleagues come in and they will give you, you know, what's been happening, what's going on, so forth. I'm going to do it a little differently. So there's a lot of, of uh, stuff that's going on. And I'm sure that many of you may have questions. <laughs> and so I'd just like to start with your questions. And then from the questions, I probably can amplify some of the things I would normally say to you. So why don't we start that way, Mr. President? All right, sounds like good. Um, well, do we have any questions for Dr. Daniels? All right, uh, VP uh, Rubio. Hi, Dr. Daniels, thanks for being with us. Uh, yeah, I'm Vice President Rubio. Um, you know, I guess regarding the exams coming up and I guess just in relation to this pandemic as well, um, you know, I feel whenever anybody gets sick, you know, there's one place that our minds go quickly and it's COVID. So <clears throat> I have a child that's in and out of daycare. And so anytime that somebody is sick, they have to stay out and report symptoms and we get a mass email. So, um, so we had to stay out once and I went and got a COVID test, but we got super sick. Um, luckily our test came back negative, but there was a brief moment of panic and immediately I reached out to my instructors because, um, School is important to me, um, and I'm very, very safe when I'm out and about. There's no bar hopping and all that stuff. I'm masked, you know, hand sanitizer and all. But so my question is, is there a way that we can implement? And I use this term lightly as of recent, but a policy maybe or something along the lines, um, you know, where we can't maybe even at one point, we can't be, I guess, our grades deducted. I have a, I have an instructor that has a very strict zero late work policy, and it was tough for me to apply my best knowledge to the piece of work. Um, it was an essay, and it was only worth five points. So, you know, if you didn't get all five points, then you didn't get an A. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, I, I, luckily I didn't have COVID, but my, obviously, under those circumstances, I wouldn't take advantage of any kind of policy or anything, but is there a way that we can have one freebie if somebody catches COVID? I guess, is that silly or too much to ask for? And maybe not necessarily a freebie, but something that could be worked out. I know. Well, I don't think you need a policy. I think what needs to occur, the faculty need to follow what the provost has told them because the provost has indicated that it should be flexibility 
especially during this time. If that flexibility isn't there, I think it would be incumbent upon a student, possibly you, Marcus, to actually let your dean know. We have to be flexible. We have to pivot. Uh, today was the highest number of COVID uh, infections that reported in the state of Wisconsin. Today, we had the highest in Madison and Dane County. We have to realize that during this pandemic, we have to be flexible. And I don't think folks, I don't think students should be penalized because they are sick or they're infected with COVID. And it's always not going to be COVID, as you already indicated, because it could be a URI. It could be uh, another type of virus. And to be honest with you, I've had two folks, cabinet members, who have had the virus, but not COVID, and knocked them down for five days. So flexibility is key. What I would also uh, ask the provost is to reiterate her position to faculty on flexibility, understanding the situation that we're in. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was great. Um, anyone else have any questions? All right, Senator Fisher. Uh, Senator Sabranix had his hand up for a while too. Um, perhaps my screen is not I, updated. I don't have my hand up. Um, okay. Yeah. But thanks okay. anyway. Uh, that was a uh, technical, um, but I will ask a question um, not to get ahead of uh, any reporting or anything that's come across your desk. Uh, again, uh, President uh, Dr. Daniels, it's great to have you here and taking our questions. We do receive a, a pretty good amount of feedback directly from our academic peers, which um, hopefully People are like me, and I know that um, a lot of people in the Student Senate are bringing those perspectives into the work that we do for uh, the benefit of our student population. So it's great to have you here. Um, and I know that later in this agenda, we'll be talking about College Assembly, and um, I'm on, I represent uh, the Academic uh, Council. Uh, I'm sorry, I re represent the students in the Academic Council. And I'm pretty new to it, uh, but I was at um, yesterday's College Assembly. And um, I guess my question is, is um, uh, what your um, process looks like when you receive a, um, a policy that was um, in this case, like met at an impasse, what kind of methodology do you operate in um, making decisions on policies like that? Because there are, I believe, five in opposition, um, you know, good enough, uh, a pretty good support for it, but not enough to move it through the college assembly, is my understanding. Um, and then they did a vote on whether or not it's at an impasse. And so um, is this something that not to speak on the specific matter, but just the general um, process that you use in, in looking at the, the policy as it was written by the Academic Council, as well as the alternative plans that would be coming in? Sure, I'd be happy to talk about that because I will have to talk about it in context of what happened yesterday. Because what happened yesterday should never have happened. What happened yesterday, when I found out about what had happened, which was after the assembly meeting, um, I, I was just, well, okay, I'll tell you, I was a little angry. And uh, I don't think it should have ever got to the point that it was. 
I do not believe that anybody should be disrespected. And as I understand, there was a, enough flow of disrespect toward you as the student senate representative that really concerned me. But be that as it is, because I've had a conversation with the leaders of the assembly as well. When you think about impasse, is when people can't agree. But I'm also concerned about why you don't agree. And what's the other agenda that plays when folks are in agreement? Because you have multiple agendas that are on the assembly. You've got a union agenda, and you've got an agenda that is um, really looking out for not just employees and students, but for the integrity of the institution. So when there is an impasse, and I will tell you in the past there's been many, and it's been minimized lately, I look at what is being recommended by a council, what's the rationale, what does it impact, what's the impact of a policy on students, what's the impact of a policy on faculty and staff and administrators, and does it have any relationship to do with the community in which we serve? So I look at those, and then I, according to the assembly uh, bylaws, they, if there's a dissenting opinion, and I think they have two weeks from which they can submit that, I will look at that, because I want to look at their rationale, understanding what they are putting forward. And then I make a decision. I also find that some decisions are not necessary because there are expectations that you have. And, it, and part of this is because when I was in the classroom, I taught psychology. I had to make it a point to make sure that my students, average of 120 per class, would get responses from me no later than four days after they asked. Because that's reasonable. And for me, why would I treat someone different if I was expecting the same thing? The other thing I put into this understanding policies is my experience. And I have over 35 plus years of higher education experience. And I've seen good, the bad, and the ugly. And I use my experiences as I read what is the objective, the goal, the proposal, and the dissent. I just hope that when it's all done, folks just think it's a fair discussion. It's been a fair decision. I would also, during that time, depending on the, the topic, if you will, I would probably ask a couple of people what they think. So I get a different view before I make that decision. So within two weeks, when they send me their dissenting review, and I know because I reread all the proposals this morning, I'll make my decision as it relates to yesterday. Just like students need to know from their faculty information in a timely manner, I believe that the assembly in the college needs to have it in a timely manner. So I'm not going to wait on it. So that's my perspective and how I'm going to look at it. I really appreciate your response to that. And um, during my report, I'm, I'm going to stick close to my role within academic council. I did feel at some point during the college assembly that I 
kind of stepped outside of the role as a student representative at Academic Council and I just became kind of a student. And so I just felt like I'm just a student now um, because it got to a point where, you know, I've, I've, I cherish the relationships that I have with, um, you know, my academic peers, my friends, these are my friends and, and everyone that I interact with is really working hard, um, in dealing with so many different things as it pertains to personal life, but then school is this different place. So I just, again, I wanted to, um, acknowledge, um, that I appreciate your response and I'm glad that you're here today. I will say this <clears throat> historically up until I don't know 10 years ago maybe academicians never ask students anything because they feel that they know everything it's the same issue when we talk about racism and understanding differences in people because we never ask those folks who are directly impacted by whatever action it might be. Putting yourself in the role of a student, I would hope that people would listen respectfully. Because that's how you learn. 20 years ago, there was a, a movement in this country and it was what was called the Learning College. And the Learning College basically stated that everybody, everybody in an institution learns <laughs> from the custodian to the student to the president. And part of that learning helps us to help students. <laughs> and so we've got to understand and respect the opinions of students as we craft what are going to be our avenues for the future. The Academic Council in this particular phrase, and you can add this to your report, spent a lot of time on that policy. In fact, this was the second reading. <laughs> and that policy to me is, is, is just, that's how we should do business to start with. <laughs> and I suspect that at the end of 15 more days from now, I guess, the decision is not going to be that much different than the academic council's decision. <laughs> Those folks worked hard. You worked hard on that policy. And then it needs to be respected the work that it was done. Now, I also think in many of these instances, there are fears. Fears by folks that think there's something going to, to happen if they approve something. We cannot operate through that type of fear, especially when there's no evidence that that was going to occur. So, I guess I'll end there. All right, uh, Senator Ziegler, you got a question? Uh, yes, Dr. Daniels, uh, we appreciate you being here. We know your time is valuable. Um, my question is regarding um, the faculty and staff going ahead um, now with the budget cuts and, um, and the state budgetary cuts and the low enrollment. Um, what's the status of their employment? Status of? Faculty and staff. You said employment? Yes. Are there going to be any cuts? <laughs> Are there going to be any cuts? I have no idea. The cuts have to be coming down from WTCS. And every, every governmental agency, state agency, received what is called a lapse. So they had lapse funding. And it's up to them each one of the agencies to determine how they're going to do with their lapse funding. And their plans are not due into DOA, Department of Administration, until December. But I do know 
that from a WTCS point of view, they're going to do everything they possibly can not to impact the, the uh, general fund, or we call the uh, GPR, that goes to our colleges. I expect that it's going to be some level of reduction of revenue in January. To the, what extent, I have no idea. But I think the crux also is about the following year, because we're in a biennium. And with that's going to happen, if in fact we continue along the same pathway as we are right now, we're going to lose three, four, five hundred FTEs. We're pro we are now projecting that we will be around 7,500. And initially, when we talked about it, it was somewhere around eight. Well, that has a cost factor to it, obviously. My intention has always been my intention is that we will not furlough or we will lay off individuals. But I don't have a crystal ball on what's going to happen. If the state came back or the legislature came back and said, you know, we're going to cut your budget by 20 percent, that's a different situation than it is right now. We're 9 percent down in enrollment. If that holds, we're going to see a cut for 2021 through 2023. What this means for us is that we've got to look at tasks that are being done. Do we still need to do those tasks? November 11th, there's going to be an all college forum on budget. And explaining as much as we know at that point, what it's going to look like in the, the next few years. So if we, when we do projections, we do it out for 10 years. But again, this is, we're in a situation where <laughs> the planning is, is all up in the air in terms of the budget. And we're so dependent on full-time equivalent student and depending on part of what the legislature is going to do. At this point, I can tell you, I'm not looking at a layoff or a um, furlough at this point. And if the budget picture changes drastically uh, negatively, I think everything is on the table. If that happens. All right. Um, you have uh, Dr. Daniels. Time has been reached. Um, I see Senator Jones has a question. Uh, do we have a motion to extend the time? Mine was actually a motion to do just that. All right. Um, how much time would you like to extend it by? Um, let's extend for five minutes just to give people the opportunity to ask their questions. All right. Um, do I have a second? Second by Saeed. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Luke. Um, all those in favor, use the hand raising feature now. All right, and you can lower them down. And all those opposed, raise them up now. And lower them down. Um, and any abstentions? All right, and you can lower them down. And it does pass, uh, so you got another five minutes. Um, I'm going to use this opportunity to hand it over to VP Rubio and step out. Um, so I will see you guys later, and you've, you're in two hours, buddy. <laughs> you, Bye. And thank you, Dr. Daniels, for uh, coming, by the way. Bye -bye. No problem. Before you move on, I will actually tell you that I know you do this in five minute increments, <laughs> but my time is good. <laughs> so 
just let you know that. Does anybody have any final questions? All righty. Senator Weiner. I had to find the mute button. Um, thank you, Dr. Daniels, for being here. I appreciate your your transparency with the with the student body. Um, so last semester we were hit pretty much in the middle of the term and classes that were previously in person had to rapidly change to the developing situation. Um, this semester classes that were predominantly in person adjusted, you know, as best they could to what they knew ahead of time. I feel as though some classes uh, adjusted a little um, strenuously, I'd say, because I, I know I have an environmental science class personally, and that that is predominantly a, you know, we went on weekly field trips. We we do a lot of stuff in class and abroad, and that class has been just um, very strenuous and not like the traditional, you know, experience you would get in a classroom. I was wondering if there was any steps by the college to st step their foot in the door of, you know, uh, instructors and their plans to try to help the situation at all. When you're talking about doing um, field trips, doing abroad. Um, I know that is completely out of the door. That is completely out the door. And, you know, the struggle is providing as close as possible an educational environment from which you can still be successful. And faculty, like everybody else, many of them are still learning how to do that as well. That's why we increase the training for them in terms of their ability to articulate the subject matter to the point that students can be successful. Health and safety is always going to be number one. And I do not want to have students in harm's way. And this virus moves quickly. And as you read last week, the, the airborne nature of the virus. And that's something that obviously we don't have a lot of control over. But one of the things that we will be doing with faculty, and this goes back to an earlier question, is about flexibility. And being able to provide what students need so they can be successful. In some areas, not necessarily in engineering, but if you think through health and you think through some of the health sciences, we have accreditation standards that are specific to those areas. And you can't deviate. Um, and, and quite frankly, we're finding some difficulty in doing that. An example for me is clinicals within the nursing department. Because we are at the mercy of the hospitals. We don't control their ability to accept us. And if they cut or they have extensive testing before you could come into the hospital, we have to be able to provide that if we can. But over the last two weeks, you've seen an increase, the spike, and no more beds, and they're concerned about folks who are coming in, as well as the health and safety that we believe in terms of our own students. And that's difficult. Hence why many of them are doing simulations, which the accrediting body has said that is acceptable during this period of time. And they're not the only ones. So. It's difficult, but I think it's also important to be flexible in the delivery of the instruction to the extent that we do not compromise health and safety. Thank you, Dr. Daniels. I appreciate it. You're welcome. All righty. Well, if there are no final questions, uh, again, Dr. Daniels, thanks for being here. We appreciate your time. And you are more than welcome to stay throughout the rest of our General Assembly or be on with your way. Oh, you, you're excusing me? If you'd like. I'm dismissed. You are dismissed. Anyway, <laughs> you have a good rest of the meeting. Thank, Thank you. you.
Great. All right, so to jump right into our officer and community reports, um, I didn't receive anything from President Green regarding an executive council report, but I can just run through unless Ellie, or sorry, Advisor Rum, did you receive anything? Okay, um, so we met yesterday. Um, we talked about a bunch of things. Um, we are noticing a lot of people are struggling with logging in their office hours. So we know on the E-team we need to crack down on just sending out daily reminders. Um, so with that being said, um, we kind of came up with, you know, for everybody to take a moment during this meeting and just put in your phone at, you know, nine o'clock at night even, or whatever is a reasonable time just shortly before you're going to go to bed, but you know you're home on a Sunday night just to set a reminder in there to log your office hours. We know you do the work. We see you all over the place in virtual meetings and stuff doing, getting things done. So please try to remember to do that. It's a, a very easy way for points to accumulate. Um, which, yeah, in my report, I guess we'll talk about that, but, um, yeah, and then we, I also brought up, you know, if it would be a good idea to talk with Dr. Daniels about, um, uh, sorry, about a policy, you know, for, in case anybody does catch COVID and, you know, an instructor wasn't so lenient on rules. Um, other than that, am I missing anything? No. Okay. Well, that'll conclude President Green's report. I'm sure there will be something updated. So check the minutes for next week. Um, yes. So moving down to my report, um, I did update the stipend report. I have been sending emails back and forth with folks about points. So I just kind of run through it just in case anybody else does catch themselves in, you know, a situation where you're point secure and um, senators get five points before they have the opportunity to appeal. Um, uh, you can appeal at any point. Okay. At five points, a senator is removed from their seat. Yes, my mistake. Um, so yeah, you can um, appeal up to three points per appeal. Um, but the thing is, if you would like to appeal your points, any points, um, do send me, VP, um, Vice President of Administration Finance, um, and just a formal email saying that you would like to. And kind of the the process, you'll see um, we do have um, an appeal later on today. But basically, you're going to write out a letter and share that with Senate. And from there, we'll vote on you know whether we'll appeal those points or you know if we think that there's another action that we need to take. Um, so I will post in this chat quickly the link just so that everybody can see the stipend report, just so that way you have a hard copy of it. Um, other than that, that's going to conclude my report unless there are any questions. I was out last week as well, so, if, so most of you might have missed me unless you sent me an email or a chat. Doesn't look like any questions. Great. Uh, so yeah, next will be Legislative and Rules Committee, VP Boyd. Um, I have a relatively brief update, I suppose. Um, focus has mostly been on the Wisconsin Student Government Meeting um, that will be coming up tomorrow, and we have a section later in the agenda to address the specifics of that. Um, I'll be setting up the Legislative Affairs uh, actual team meetings, hopefully later in this month, yet still meeting. Um, in the near future, I think the goal is mostly to uh, establish and refine more of a um, meeting rules etiquette, kind of a cheat sheet handout so people can feel a little more comfortable with engagement, know what's expected, know um, when, just procedure, just kind of a quick, here's, here's notes, here's how this works, here's when you use this so there's more comfort with speaking and knowing what the expectations are in terms of etiquette. Um, but other than that, I don't have anything um, to add to my report at this time. Right. Any questions? Um, sorry, I also forgot to mention that uh, Monday, 1030 to 1130 is the um, finance and finance committee meeting. 
Um, I think everybody that's in it, I did send a message out, but uh, anybody that would be interested in joining it or anything, 1030. Um, I'll have a Teams link, and so you'll, I'll send things out, but sorry, I forgot to say that. Um, team and Development, BP Marino. Hello, guys. I do have a relative short uh, report, and it is that um, the meetings for the uh, Team Development Committee started. Uh, eventually, we'll start taking action. Um, I hope that everyone's doing good with the midterm week, uh, either this week or next week. Um, and remember that you have the opportunity to reach out if there's anything that either the team or I personally could assist with. Um, but other than that, we'll keep in contact and start sending more things out. Great. Any questions? Actually, so I'm going to stop saying any questions. Just raise your hands if you do at any point. Uh, Public Relations Committee, VP Said. Hello. I do just have a short report. So um, we have updated the team settings, which would only allow um, student Senate members to um, start the virtual office. And um, we have started using Hootsuite to publish weekly posts, and we do have scheduled posts for next week even. So, um, and also we are looking to order some promotional items from for Imprint. And I think that's all I have for this week. And that's in my report. Thank you. Um, on to special reports, advisor room. Yeah, um, mostly just. Uh, some events that are coming up. Um, I also remembered I wanted to remind you about the uh, student leader training Blackboard course. Um, technically, there is a due date for a couple of the modules by today. Um, so please, please, please go in and do at least that introduction to student life and the uh, leadership skills um, because we really want you to have those early on in the year and we're getting to midterms already. So make sure that you um, are working on that course. Again, that is paid train training time. Um, so if you have questions about how to log it, feel free to ask me. Um, you can totally do it during your office hours um, in the virtual office or not. Um, so just make sure you're working on that. Uh, did you have a question about the Blackboard? It was not about the Blackboard, but um, I did wanted to uh, kind of add up for something that I know that either you or Marcus or I could say, but it was the student presentations. Um, I think that was a point that we kind of missed. But if you want to take on, on that, Ellie. Yeah, sure. Um, so just a reminder to do um, classroom presentations. And in this current format, and actually always, um, the requirement is at least to ask the question of whether you can give a short, like three minute presentation in each of your classes or a request to post an announcement at Blackboard, send us a class wide email. Um, so we just want to let students know what Senate's all about. And uh, two of the vice presidents, Moreno and Rubio, have both um, put together some materials. So there's an email that's ready to go, a presentation that's ready to go. Um, and maybe um, next week we could actually show that presentation. I don't think we have yet this semester. So um, and once you do that presentation or reach out to your instructor, um, I can't remember which person wanted to know who's keeping track of that. Ruby or Moreno, which? I, either one. So you have zero reason to, you just have zero excuse. All right. We're going to add it to that stipend tracking form. So let Ruby know. It'll just be another column classroom presentations done or not. Um, the other things I wanted to mention, um, some upcoming events. I know I mentioned one of these last week, but I'm going to say it again. And in a minute, when I'm done talking, I'm going to put a link in the chat um, for the campus conversations on voting. Um, I think those will be really great. And Sean didn't mention this, but that's actually where he went uh, tonight. He's facilitating a conversation with other students on um, whether to vote or not. So those should be really um, interesting conversations. And I'm sure all of you have thought. So I'll put the link in here in a minute, which is how you can sign up um, to participate. The other things coming up, um, I know we have a lot of senators who are parents, um, so there are two upcoming things that might be relevant to you if you um, want to check them out. Um, so first is the Family Spooktacular. 
um, that PTK has typically organized with other organizations. Um, that used to be a super fun in-person event, costume parade. Um, I just loved it last year. It was so much fun. Um, but they're still doing a pickup um, where you can come and pick up sort of Halloween goodies for kids. So I could not find the specific details. I know Renee's on, so if you have them, um, a link for something they could read, um, if you could put that in there. I just could not find it as I was perusing some things right before this. And the other one um, is Santa's wish list, which is open to students who have kids up to age 12. Um, there's a, a program where staff, faculty, other students, um, they offer to buy gifts for kids. Um, so it's for students who are parents um, and maybe you don't have enough to get them all of the gifts that um, your little kiddos deserve. Um, so it's a great program. Staff love participating. I know that I have bought things each year, um, picked a student off of the giving tree. Um, so the deadline for that is November 11th um, and I'll I'll go find the link for that too. So um, lots of great things. Um, everything's in Wolfpack Connect, but I just wanted to highlight those things because um, many of you are parents and um, thought you might be interested. Family Spectacular, you don't have to be the parent yourself. If you have other children in your life that you'd like to pick up the goodies for, um, totally welcome. The um, Santa's wish list, you do have to be the actual parent of the kid, though. Love it. And that concludes my report. Great, thank you. So next is Student Activities Board with President Green. Uh, again, I'll fill in. Uh, we are still looking for an alternate. Um, I did forget to mention too, the first meeting that I went to, they made very interactive with others. So it was funny, it was my first one and I, I had forgotten the schedule. So I had to open up the bar as I was in this meeting and um, they broke us out into like sessions and we had to come up with um, all the different things you can use an umbrella for or something creative, or I think it's something online, something creative that you can use umbrella for. So it was really fun. Um, and again, it's a great way to network and meet people. So I think it could benefit a lot of you if you know you like talking to people. Um, and so next meeting is tomorrow at 1.30. If you are interested in that, please just send me an email. Like if at 1.30 you're bored, uh, please stay inside and don't go places and check out this meeting. Um, so that will conclude that report. Next will be the housing accessibility update with Senator Jones, who I don't think is here. I have his report. So I'm going to read it as if I was him. Here is, uh, let's get the part. So next week, uh, October 22nd, I will, I will be presenting the first draft of the Student Housing Resource Guide outline. I would like feedback from the Senate at the time regarding questions, comments, concerns, et cetera, about the guide outline. I am requesting to help, or excuse me, I am requesting the help of three to four senators to assemble and go through data regarding student housing concerns and issues in the Madison and regional areas. This would count toward your office hours and be a big help in advancing the guide's progress. I'm interested or I'm requesting help of three to four students to compile resources available within the Madison and regional communities that could be potential, uh, excuse me, potentially be included within the resource guide itself. That would count as office hours as well. Um, and he's also looking to set up times for students and or community housing concerns. Uh, excuse me, concern forums to allow students the opportunity to discuss personal concerns and obstacles regarding housing and what assistance they feel would be most beneficial to alleviating those problems. So again, I was reading that as if I was Senator Jones. So if you're interested in any of that, uh, please see Senator Jones. Next, digital equity with Senator Zybel. Camera on, please. That is funny, but I have no report, buddy. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, next, Racial Inequity Committee with Senator Fisher. Hi. Um, so, major update was with regards to the student wide email. Um, went out to all the students on, was that Tuesday night? Um, and they have 10 days to, you know, for core one, submit statement of interest uh, via survey monkey link. Um, someone asked me ahead of this meeting if I know how many are coming in so far. I don't. Um, 
and you know I do know that uh, people are aware of it. Um, so that's promising that you know folks are telling me that hey I saw this thing in the email. Um, there's some talk about doing sort of like a Madison College uh, social networking site takeover. Um, and so I was asked by President Green whether or not I wanted to participate in one of the um, social networking sites, Instagram, and doing something like that. And I thought, well, I don't know enough, but if there's uh, something that, you know, I could do to help increase the interest in the uh, racial and equity city, I would certainly like to try. And then we kind of stumbled around the idea of doing sort of like an AMA, which is Internet Speak for Ask Me Anything. Um, Instagram, that social networking site, has the ability to do like live streaming video. Um, I don't know if that's something we can do before the due date for core one for all students, um, but if we can, we will try. Um, that due date is the 23rd, I believe. Um, and so hopefully students are, you know, responding to that. It is competitive. There's one student seat in core one. Um, and so those, uh, if we have more than one applicant, those will be held over for other cores going forward. Um, my plan is to um, continue to work on uh, the procedures for um, this uh, racial inequity committee, uh, working with uh, VP Boyd um, with legislative rules and making sure that, you know, we're definitely, you know, following um, uh, an acceptable procedure. So far, I think we're in good standing um, and right now it's just about filling that core and um, getting on to um, filling the next core and and where the agenda takes us from there we will go. I did get some additional information as well from Ellie that um, will be of interest to the committee as it pertains to racial um, equity as it were. So I hope I got to everything. That uh, if there aren't any questions, that will conclude my report. Advisor Rome. Yeah, I just wanted to give an update. I took a look at the um, application that is out there. Looks like four legitimate applications and unfortunately one troll who submitted um, for the Racial and Equity Committee. Well, that's good to hear that there's enough interest and I appreciate you giving us the update. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't give that to you earlier. <laughs> oh, no worries, no worries. Um, actually, one more thing I will add if I have a little bit of time left is, um, you know, we were talking about at different courses, there are going to be um, different level of, um, you know, paneling for, you know, deciding. And I thought that it'd be um, of good, it, it would be a good idea for us to put some real thought and consideration into this as it, we can already see it's competitive. Um, and so, you know, uh, we'll be looking at ways to increase the level of uh, transparency and, and fair paneling in all of this stuff. Um, so I'll have more on that later. I think for core one, it's going to the executive um, committee, so I won't have anything to do with that. Great work. You're awesome. OK. Um, textbook affordability committee is vacant and moving down to regional metro campus reports Reedsburg Watertown are also vacant. Um, I um, believe Sheila, uh, Senator Rungi, unfortunately. Oh, sorry, Senator Zabel, did you have a question? So I drive past the campus here and um, an update, if anybody knows, they are putting a huge field of solar panels on the uh, in the field next to it, which is pretty cool. So that's going to help out a lot, but that's all I have for that. For your saying Reedsburg campus? Yes, sir. OK, yeah, no, I haven't really been done that area, but that's amazing. That's great. Um, did anybody receive Senator Rungi's Portage Report or Northern Regional Engagement Committee? OK, uh, Goodman South is also vacant, so. College Assembly and Council reports. College Assembly with uh, President Green, I didn't receive. Um, any update? Um, we had a meeting yesterday, and it was. That's actually why I said I'm using the word policy loosely. Uh, Advisor Rome will take this over because she was there the entire time. If that's okay. <laughs> um, I I was just gonna say um, that 
now might be a good opportunity in case there was confusion about Shai's question earlier. Um, I, I think people sort of got the gist of it, but basically the Academic Council brought forward a policy um, that states uh, faculty need to give grades within a week for minor assignments, um, grades for tests, longer assignments within two weeks, and sort of a window for responding to emails, um, encourage 24 to 48 hours, um, and certainly within 72. Um, and there was quite a heated debate um, about whether that should be a formal policy. Um, so that that's really what that question was about. I don't know if anybody has questions um, after hearing both what Shai and Dr. Daniels had to say. There were a couple other things that also happened in the meeting. Um, there was a, an IT council update sort of on their strategic plan or the guiding principles for the IT strategic plan. Um, but otherwise the academic council proposal or policy proposal took up a lot of time. Um, it so was, I'm not sure. Oops, sorry. Go ahead. Um, how germane it was, but there was an instructor that stepped in, I think within the beginning of the meeting and, and did make a comment regarding our textbook affordability program. Um, yeah. I've even, I'm not sure if that is something that will be presented at a future meeting or even tabled at some point, but I even have like just been, it's that's something that's been in my mind. So I've even been brainstorming potential possibilities that could work. Uh, I mean, I'm sure, you know, you guys may have thought about them when you were creating this. So maybe they're not even things that could work, but at least we're starting to get of things, but think of things, but maybe advisor Rome, you have more insight about what yeah, so the, the concern from the faculty member was just basically stating that he had made all of his courses, um, all of the materials through open access resources. Um, and he was concerned that students were still being charged $21 for the three credit class. Um, and I get from a one class at a time standpoint, that's frustrating. Um, but the textbook affordability committee and that policy were really designed with the overall best interest of the long term. It's not one class at a time, but really over the course of a semester, over the course of a year, over the course of your whole time at Madison College, you will save hundreds of dollars, regardless of whether you pay the fee for a class that you don't need it for. So I think that his comment was a little bit narrow, narrowly focused. Um, but I think it would definitely be worth getting an update from uh, the textbook affordability committee. Um, so I can I can ask um, Holly Deering and the bookstore manager to come and give an update soon. Um, they also recently added a whole bunch of books that are um, cost under $20 into the rental program because there was funds to do so. Um, so previously you might have taken an English class where you had to pay for three books that were like $8 each. Now those are in the rental program. So um, they're really making improvements and they're looking at a ton of data. Um, so I can I can ask them to come to a meeting in the next month or so. It also sounds, an update and it, ask questions. Yeah, it also sounds like a great opportunity for instructors to start, or I guess to maybe even go back into providing, you know, additional material where costs are, you know, beneficial in some way that, you know, there's something out there that we don't know about that students can get their hands on that would be covered. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. so great. Any questions? And Ellie, your hand's still up. Uh, Advisor Rome, your hand is still up. Um, great. So moving down to academic council, Senator Fisher. All right. Um, well, the big thing with um, the academic council is that we did do that proposal yesterday and it did get voted to an impasse, which we have been kind of talking about at length. And I I guess I, yeah, even though I'm new to academic council, I just want to underline the significance and the importance of this um, particular policy. This is something that was extensive. Um, and, you know, Senator Jones um, um, spearheaded a lot of the, you know, the, the student voice in that in that regard. And so I spoke with uh, him just ahead of the uh, college um, college assembly and, you know, he, he I kind of did the opposite of what he um, um, advised me to do because I was new 
Um, but it, you know, uh, there there came a point um, during the college assembly um, as I was one of the presenters where I just I kind of just became a student, um, and so that's why I did a little bit more talking um, than what was pre um, prepared in the presentation. So the only thing I really want to say to that um, is um, um, the academic council is still going to, you know, be meeting. Um, we have our next meeting on the 22nd. And um, so, you know, I'm sure there'll be some discussion about this, um, but then also, you know, some other future business as well would be my guest. Um, we'd spend some some time planning and I, I see a couple hands up. Is, is Senator Ziegler asking a question? I've seen, I don't, I don't know, if my, on my end, it's on my end. Um, Advisor Rome, did you? OK, it's on my end. The hands just stay up for some reason. So that's really my only report um, for um, Academic Council. Um, I had wanted to kind of watch back a little bit what the what the College Assembly presentation really looked like in the recording, but um, according to their rules, it's not something that um, yeah that they were able to do for this specific meeting because I guess someone had mentioned that it was only being recorded for a minute. So while there is a recording, it is not something that is going to be obtainable is my understanding, uh, but they're looking at that going forward, whether or not these recordings um, are going to be um, archivable, um, which again, that's not academic council, but since we occupied so much of the time during college assembly yesterday, I thought it was relevant to mention. That will conclude my report for Academic Council. Great, thank you. VP Boyd, Diversity and Community Relations Council. Uh, I have no report. We haven't met. There's no scheduled times, so I have nothing to report back. Thank you. Now down to Senator Willis, Facilities, Planning and Investment Council. No report. Great, thank you. Um, Finance Council, Senator Zagler. No report at this time. IT Council, Senator Ziba. No report. And Institutional Effectus Council is Senator Rungi, who's um, absent. S uh, Senator Willis, Professional Development Council. No report. And VP Marino, Student Affairs Council. Sorry, is that I didn't want the extreme barking of dogs, um, but no report on this side. Great, thanks. Now moving down to old business items. Um, Senator Yuhenin, am I saying that right? Yuhenin, um, his yes. point of view, and he has 10 minutes to do so. So feel free to take it away. Okay, so uh, it's pretty much the same I said last time. Uh, the were a couple of inconveniences in, for me in the beginning of the semester, like I'm sure a lot of, of other people had too. Um, I started catching up with all my like extracurricular activities, including student center, like the second uh, or third week, week of classes. So those were obviously pointed a lot. And then when I started doing all the things for the student center, I forgot to or I forgot to log in my hours. So then when I did it, I did it wrong. But I now learned how to do it correctly and how VP Rubio suggested me. I put a reminder on my phone to do it every Thursday. It is kind of like the day I have the most time. So I it won't be happening again if there's a chance. I think that's it. Advisor Rome. So just want to clarify the policy again um, that up to three points can be appealed at a time. Um, I was just taking a look at the spreadsheet and I think there might be an error because you can only lose half a point for office hours per week. Um, so we will need to get that updated. Um, but that would mean let me do some quick math here. 
from the first two week two general assembly meetings and two weeks of office hours is what you could request to be appealed um, for three points because that's what that would add up to, which would leave you with. Two, uh, two points. If you appealed the three, you would be left with two. So procedurally, um, there needs to be a motion to vote. Um, and then I will put a link in the chat um, because it is a closed ballot vote. We don't have any non voting people. I assume that Renee would not vote. <laughs> She's the only other one in the meeting who's not a senator. And uh, VP Rubio, as you are chairing the meeting, you cannot vote right now. VP Rubio may be recognized. I'm sorry, Senator Fisher, yes. May I be recognized? Yes, feel free to speak. Oh, yes. Um, uh, first, a quick procedural question. Do we have sufficient number to vote, given that VP Rubio is not in voting? And Yes, you have more than half of the officers and more than half of the Thank you for that. Can I also directly address um, Senator Union? Um, sorry, just a quick side note too. If anybody has questions about uh, parliamentary procedure, the I always keep this with me. I always keep these, all of this stuff with me during these meetings. So please refer to these just for sake, please. Um, yes, you may um, speak, Senator Fisher. Sorry, go ahead. OK, I guess my only question uh, for you, Senator, um, is. Um, you know what? Can, can you just share? I think you started to last week. I can't recall, but refresh us a little bit if you would be so kind on the role that S Student Senate has in your life and you know, like what it what does it mean for you to um, you know, represent represent the students because I I'll just um, ask the question and kind of um, share that sometimes like rules and things like that um, and then technology on top of it makes for things to be complicated. Um, so I wasn't here when you became a senator, so I don't I don't know that aspect of it. Um, can you share a little bit about you know what? Why? Why it's uh, why why it's important. Um, yeah. So, I started being, I started in the student senate. Um, not when I started in medicine college because when I started in medicine college, I didn't super know, um, but it could be part of. But I always wanted to be part of the, like like part of the college in like a deeper way, you know, like contribute to uh, the improvement of the and yes, give some of me for the things I got from the college. Um, yeah, like I, I would like to be a lot, I, I would like to participate a lot more in the student senate um, this semester, like probably for a lot of other people too. That's been like my toughest semester in college ever. <laughs> uh, so I have been struggling to balance my time and my activities. That's why it took me like three weeks in the beginning of the semester to start just putting my things together. Um, but yeah, that's like what there is no way I would like, the way I like to be in the student center. Like I, I like to be just part of the, uh, the entity that represents the students and try to make it a better place. Thank you. A uh, couple follow ups. Um, what um, committees and councils are you on uh, currently? Or is that a? 
Uh, I am not anyone right now. Okay. All right. I saw Senator Jones had his question up as well. And if you'd like to ask your question. I, I was just going to move to the previous question or call the question, should say. Great. Um, so um, with that said, we'll vote, vote on whether to vote now. Oh, yes. Uh, Called a question, so um, <laughs> that moves it immediately into um, everyone needs to say whether they are prepared to vote or not. Great. Is everybody prepared to vote? <laughs> All those in favor. <laughs> All those in favor, raise your hands, please. Great. And feel free to put them down. Now those that are opposed, raise your hands, please. Of voting, as a reminder. Okay. Voting, yes. <laughs> and those that there, put your hands down. Those that abstain from voting, put your hands up. Great, so that passes. So we will now do a vote. Sorry. And are we thinking maybe two minutes? One minute? Let me see how many people can vote. And then I'll just look for that number of responses. I'm looking for 12 responses. Last chance. All right. That passes. So consider those three points removed. Um, and I did want to make a note. Um, I don't think VP Rubio said this in his report, but um, even if you do appeal points for missed meetings or um, office hours, those missed responsibilities still do count for the stipend so you can't just miss all your meetings appeal your points and um have it be good so we still do consider missed meetings um, as we look at the percentage needed to attend for the stipend great so yeah in other words um make sure you try your best to not add up any points so that way you're paid at the end of the semester um, as much as possible for all your hard work so um, great. Yes. Well, again, welcome aboard, Senator Muhannon, and um, please look into joining either a council in a committee or two committees or two councils. Um, <clears throat> great. So moving down to new business items, nothing there, um, non-business and housekeeping items. Uh, VP Board has 15 minutes with Wisconsin student government position statements. The floor is yours. One second, I'm uploading. I realize I think it's sent out and I'm entirely new to what this looks like. So I might need a little bit of guidance from advisor Rome of what we're looking for here, what this discussion um, will look like. It shows that it's sending. OK, should be in the chat now. Positions. So basically, um, the Wisconsin student government, um, which advocates for the needs and desires and all of those things for um, students in all of the 16 Wisconsin Technical College uh, schools. So that group is meeting tomorrow and these are the proposed items that they will bring to the legislature in February. Um, so um, 
they just wanted they're giving it a first look tomorrow at the WSG meeting. So they wanted to make sure that all of the student governments across the state had a chance to look at it and provide feedback. So please open that, give you a minute to read it. And then just if you have any questions or comments, um, Jenna and Lucas can take those to the meeting tomorrow. Awesome. Any questions? Well, moving down. Oh, yes. Uh, Senator Jones, that goes first. Um, on point three of the proposed WSG positions, is that 11.8 million also in consideration with the COVID cutbacks over the next foreseeable couple of years or so? Or was that compiled before any sort of cutbacks were considered? Fantastic question, which Jenna is going to write down and bring tomorrow. <laughs> I'm guessing not, but I'm not confident in that. Great. And Fair enough. Thank you. Senator Fisher. I just wanted to make sure we had enough time to really read through this because I'm still um, teeing up um, some of the, the point one. Yeah, take your time. I just wanted to see if anybody had questions. I had another question regarding point one. Senator Jones. Um, regarding the $160,000 investment for grants on open educational resources, is that money that's being pulled from an already compiled budget, as in we already have that money, or is that compiled from um, prospective income? new funds. Well, either it was more of a open ended question to bring forward tomorrow. Yeah, anything. I don't think either anyone here knows that for sure. I mean, if you do, awesome. But. Yeah, this is all for things that the legislature is not currently doing. So yeah, it would be it would be new funds. OK. Senator, do you have another question? I see your hands. Is that to me? Yeah, I see your Maybe hands. not a specific question, just like, um, you know, not to raise discussion on it. I'm I'm really still focused on point one since we had, you know, we, we, ha we have a, a nice program for that. So I just wonder, maybe the question is, is I, I wonder what such an investment could do for um, a school like Madison technical college um given that we already have um you know some access to to text material in the form of a student rental program there, there are still things that would maybe help reduce the cost of textbooks but um i'd be curious to know how it could be used in a system like ours Um, I thought I saw Senator Zybel's hand up first. I mean, this doesn't answer his question if you want to somehow answer his question before going on to me. So can I um, make an incidental motion, I think it's called, to move to suspend the rules of the like raise your hand for you to vote just so we can have an open discussion. You can't make any motions, but you could entertain that. All right, yeah, may I entertain that then? Motion to suspend the rules. Do I have a second? Seconded by Senator Boyd, BB Boyd. Great, yes, so ask away in the talk. Vote on the motion. I think we need a vote. Or, sorry, yes. Um, so all those in favor, uh, feel free to raise your hands if you are for the discussion. Great. One, two, three, four. And feel free to put your hands down now, please. And for those that are opposed <clears throat> of the open discussion, put your hands up. Great, put them down. Those that abstain, 
Voting. Great. Okay. Yeah, it passes. <clears throat> so this will be a, an open discussion whenever you have questions. Since so just to interject on Senator Fisher's point about what we could do as the college, there are still textbooks and curriculum that utilize resources that aren't necessarily under the umbrella of our rental program that could use these funds. But yeah. moreover, Madison College is one of roughly five colleges that I believe have any sort of assistant program directly through their textbook um, affordability, meaning that the rest of the colleges under WTCS would be able to greatly benefit from this. Uh, the WSG is it's more encompassing than just us, obviously, but I do think there would still be a positive benefit that we could get from it. And odds are we wouldn't be getting the same amount of money given our rental program as one of the colleges that maybe doesn't have a system in place like that. Yeah, I was just thinking that as, as I was saying it, that, you know, I, I did an anthro class this last summer where I bought some books, right? So one book was a rental and the other ones I, I'm looking at right now, they're on my shelf. And um, and I'm glad to own them, actually. Um, and so I guess, you know, again, positionally, you know, I just think how does how does how could this potentially benefit Madison College? Um, I know it's important for a lot of the you know colleges, but, you know, you know, are there. Are there other ways of um, utilizing that investment that would that would be within their within the domain of that provision that, that'd be one of the things i would ask and I, I i see this moment as just kind of given given um vp boyd some you know angles um to to take to the conversation so you know if it if it moves you and if it, if it you know comes up or something like that be interesting to know and other since, avenues yeah and senator said feel free to speak whenever It's open discussion, man. Just speak. That. <laughs> like, it's not often that we get to suspend the rules, so this is the time to just be let your hair down a little bit. <laughs> and you might be muted if you are talking right now. Well, I didn't mean to scare you guys. Come on. I mean, <laughs> you, you, you talk now, you know. <laughs> Um, VP Boyd, what what are some, you know, in your prep work for this, or or do you is anything stand out to you that you know, after because I'm just getting this for the first time, you know, but having spent some time with it, do you have anything that you're bringing to the meeting that might elicit some discussion in this time that we have? I'm not saying we got to use all of it, but you know, this is a good opportunity to. Right, so this will be my first time going, obviously, um, and I have very little um, idea of what to expect. But when I read through each of these points, um, there wasn't anything I saw that was outright like it didn't feel I didn't have any sort of negative reaction or challenging reaction. I could see the benefits to the overall system of how getting, you know, a, a potentially 11 of the other schools point to you know, at a point of offering the associates of arts or sciences degrees where currently that's keeping you know some students at a lesser advantage compared to the five schools that you can get your full degree earned um funding i i, I guess i have a little bit of a bias and that i think anything that is funding to benefit students tends to be a step in the positive direction um so I, I understand caring about where the money comes from and how it would be allocated, but I look at it as positive movement, um, and especially when there's a direction uh, with how these are worded and what it sh what the intent behind them seems to be. So I think part of it is I do think I can glean more too from what what comes from the discussion, and that may also help me form more thoughts and ideas if if you know collectively having conversations, having ideas of how people interpret or um process the information i don't know if that answers your question but at least that's where my thought process has been thus far no question just a conversation i would really want to lean into um you know what the oer uh i got the acronym wrong no, uh, right. yeah the oer c can do you know what i mean i would really try to figure out you know what's the scope and limitation of that um in those conversations because anytime you got a new 
you know, alphabet soup of words, you know, it's all about, okay, what's, what's back in this, you know? So, um, I mean, but this is great. And I'm really glad that you brought this to the student Senate to, to look at, and I think you're going to do really great in your meeting tomorrow. Thank you. Again, this is open discussion. Um, so, uh, I, um, I know I'm, uh, I'm going to this tomorrow, um, along with, um, uh vp boyd but i guess like one here's one question i don't know if either you uh vp boyd or advisor rome could like it's like this question is related to the third point which is it like i've it's kind of two questions really but one is like about i'm kind of a little bit confused about what the how the grant system works like what the what that money's for and i guess the other question i have about that the third point is um is kind of a like it says it's replacing um some like a, a six year cap um and a 10 semester cap with um 128 hours i guess i'm i'm i guess i just go i'm kind of i'm i don't really understand kind of how that works or what kind of what that is yeah So I guess um, to answer the first part of that question, um, Wisconsin grants are state funds that are used for scholarships for students in the Wisconsin Technical College system. Um, I think this type of grant exists for the UW system and WTCS, and I believe there's significantly less funding in the pool for WTCS students. I don't know the specific process, but I do know it's available to all students at WTCS schools taking at least three credits. I don't know the process, but basically they just want more of these grants to be available because they always have way more applicants than get are they're able to fund. Um, and then the second part of that is there are a lot of state decided laws um, for how credits actually work between the WTCS and the UW system, um, how long students can take to, or how much, how long students can get funding for different programs. I don't know all the details, but basically they're, they're trying to make it so that students are able to take longer to complete programs if they need it, I think. And what's the other? Um, I'm not sure on the last bit, so we should ask a question about that. Um, what would exactly be changing about the cap? Because now that I'm looking at it, I don't quite understand either. Great question. So yeah, the, so if I'm not mistaken, the first like about the grants is basically it's just, it's like kind of asking for more money for basically for scholarships. Yep. All right. So often your question is someone else's and asking the question even for so to someone who really knows, um, it's a good refresher for them to like, oh yeah, like how do I approach this or how do I explain it? It really helps the process to ask questions about, you know, just even term words and you know, what something means. So um, definitely a good idea going in there tomorrow. To segue off of definitions, I placed in chat the WTCS OER definition as they display it. It's pretty open ended, but that way people can get a sort of look and see exactly what they consider open educational resources and what would qualify under those grants provided. I also want to just add um, Dr. Bakken is also um, said that Madison College was one of the first um, colleges that actually um, started using OER. So if you need additional information, you could always um, reach out to her and get information on that as well. Did I, did, was there a question regarding the Wisconsin grant being expanded and then the six year cap change? I just wanted to clarify real quick before I answer a question that wasn't asked. Yes, there was, and I determined I I explained the grants, but I didn't quite understand the cap. 
I don't know if you know anything more about that or not. I do. So essentially, the cap currently states that you are only able to receive that grant um, up to your 10th semester or sixth cumulative year in a community college. And what they want to do is change that to just have it a maximum credit limit of 128 hours. So that way you don't you're not limited by the time necessarily factor. You're just not you're limited by your total credit taken. Does that make sense? Yes, I think we should bring up tomorrow that that point needs to be clarified because it doesn't make sense as it's written that it applies specifically to eligibility for the grants. Yeah, I think that their understanding was that because they put after that this aligns with the GI Bill eligibility limit, that that was the clarifying factor with it. I agree, though, it, it definitely needs some extra verbiage. Um, no, other than that, I think that I mean, they're straightforward, so I'm, I'd be very interested in seeing the questions we do have, how they're answered. And I believe that was time's up as well. Um, if there are any further questions, I would say VP Boyd, direct them, and then if necessary, she'll direct wherever uh, is necessary. Quick so, point, I don't think there's any other discussion topics, but time limits aren't actually enforced when we go out of order. OK, so but I mean, if no one else says anything, we can move on. All right, it looks like we can move on. Um, so if you want and if President Green is up for it, he can resume control of the meeting. If everyone <laughs> agrees with that, basically in time for announcements. I agree. I I say he takes it over. Okie dokie then. All right. So let's get back. Um, then going down to announcements. Um, get those off. So I was done. Please, everyone, let's get those off. Z Bell, hold on a sec. Get those off. So I was done. That's a serious thing. Um, check teams, school email, reports to uh, Jones. Uh, uh, and that student leader training ship for a Blackbird course, it would it probably be in your student help email, I would assume. Uh, is that right, Advisor Rome? Right. No, it's in your student one. All right. All right. Well, check your student, check your Blackbird for whatever, and you'll see a student leadership thing. Um, it's it's on there, and it's not that long. Um, all right, Senator Zebel, your question. Well, you're gonna you're gonna love this, President Green. You, you leave for a couple of minutes with VP uh -huh. Rubio, and we're out of order now. I don't know if you <laughs> we can't we 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 suspended the rules for a little bit. So I just wanted to make a quick announcement. That's a joke, obviously. Um, so the blackboard yeah. stuff is on our student email. Is that was that correct? That was my question. I didn't want to. I know guess yeah. Email. Okay. Yeah. Well, is it, if we don't have it, should we just? email you I didn't, I didn't look i don't know if i have it or not but just i want to make yeah. sure yeah let advice rome know all right i could do that then no problem all right i was I just know. gonna say vp rubia did a fantastic job and i thought this was a really great discussion um there are um um open applications right now for senators in quarter one of the racial inequity committee and um, while you were gone, President Green, we did see that there were uh, four valid student applicants for Core One, the Racial and Equity Committee. So, um, the senators, please get those applications in as well, and we should be able to create quorum very soon here with Core One. That's my only announcement. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, if we got nothing else, then I will entertain a motion to adjourn this uh, meeting. And I don't know what we had in the chat. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna give it to Rubio. Um, do we have a second then? And I'm pulling up my participant list. Hold on. Uh, Senator Fisher, I'll give it to Senator Fisher. He'll get the second on that one. Uh, all those in favor, please use the hand raising feature now. All right, you can pull him down. <laughs> Um, and all those polls, we got to do it. Okay, now all those polls, put them up. I'm going to make everyone, we got to get into this and have it. All right, and put them down and any abstentions, put them up. 
and put them down. And I'll see you guys later. Get out of here. Have some fun. Don't do anything stupid. And be safe. Mask Bye, up. everybody. Bye, and everybody. good job, Rubio. I Thank knew you'd you. do good. Bye. Thank you.